Oh uh, uh, man, so right after we decided to have this idea, this, I channeled this equation for manifestation. Um, I'm definitely gonna be happy to uh, explain uh, what kind of got channeled into me shortly after we agreed to have this meeting. It's awesome. Yeah, dude, this is awesome. I think we're ready to go. We haven't got anyone join us yet. In, oh, we do have some people with us in the stream. How oh, cool. All right, guys, I'm excited to tell you about this thing that me and Pharaoh are doing over the next three weeks. And as I explain it, I'll be explaining to him in depth for the first time, although I think he pretty much gets the picture. So first of all, welcome to the uh, Interverse again, Pharaoh. And thanks for being here with me, my friend. On your birthday, too. What a good day to kick this off. Mm, isn't, it, isn't it so divine? You got two rams coming together in the time of the ram. Energy is just being charged in this very present moment. So if there ever was a better time to, to, to co-create and to align intentions, I can't imagine a better time than right now. So thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, man. You know, we have a seven-day difference on birthdays, too. So, yeah, I I, I'm, uh, I'm 30. I just hit my finished up my Saturn return. So... It's time to start getting serious, and I mean like S I R I U S, like serious North Star. Ooh. Find your direction. You know what I'm saying? Oh my God, that's so amazing, man! I feel like we're all the timing of this is what's really, uh, I'm really, really. Just, that's what the timing of things is really what's making me fall back into my childlike form. It's, it's seeing how everything is coming into alignment right as we are prepared to submit ourselves to, to being in alignment. Um, that, that's truly the, the biggest shock to me. It's like, you know, I, I'm, I'm really just being, uh, I wake up every morning so grateful um, knowing that I'm in perfect timing. No matter where I, what I'm doing, I know that I'm right where I need to be today, right now, on my birthday, in this present moment. Everything is going exactly on schedule. And that to me just makes me so grateful because it takes the pressure uh, that we've been kind of programmed to live by, you know, thinking that we have to be somewhere, that we have to be going somewhere. And I believe that is one of the main reasons why we miss out on a lot of our manifestations because we're just going too fast. So I'm just grateful to be able to flow in perfect timing today. Going too fast is a problem I've got too, but it's an sort of Aries thing. We want to jump on to the next thing before we even finish laying the foundations on the first thing. <laughs> I mean, mm. but what we can do consistently is where we draw power. And what we do every day is what defines who the hell we are <laughs> or the heaven we are, depending on what those things are. So <laughs> we're going to do something every day for 21 days or longer. Probably I'm down to do it for a full four weeks because I like fours for a completion and a stability and a power. So what do you think? I mean, Facebook will only let me make the event for two weeks, but we'll just extend the dates on it or whatever. I'm down to do this for four weeks. We may not be able to hop on here every day in the four weeks, but we'll keep up the practice. And I'll go ahead and explain what that is in simplified terms. I'm gonna re-explain it throughout this whole thing, but what we're doing is we're using the Fibonacci sequence or the Phi sequence of numbers. Uh, the golden mean ratio, what you would call that. It's uh, what nature uses to build stability, harmony, and, you know, resonance. Uh, it's the best sequence for reducing redundancy, but increasing efficiency. And mm -hmm. this is in Brock. You can look at it ahead of broccoli. You can see it in a starfish. You can see it in the pattern that the Venus actually makes in the orbit throughout the sky if you drew a trace line through the sky so it's in your face it's in your hand the phi spiral or fibonacci sequence is literally everywhere it is how nature builds so anything that you do with respect to that number sequence is going to have an increased effect so that could be like your breathing patterns you could do a three in breath five out breath or five in breath eight out breath or you could try to schedule your workout pattern around it you can you can do a lot of stuff with phi i mean obviously when you bring it into art you get some of the most masterful appearance appearing graphic art ever 
whenever that five spiral is there. So even though you might not even perceive it, it's just something that your eye tells you is beautiful. So all that being said, that's what we're going to be incorporating into this imaginary abundance mind retraining practice we're doing. And we're spending money. So that's another whole big can of worms topic is money. And I'm sure you have something to say about that. I'll finish explaining the gist of what we're doing and then get your thoughts. But yeah, money, we need to change our relationship to it. And we need to solve this classic conundrum of chicken or the egg when it comes to money. Were you broke in your mind first or were you broke in the bank first? Well, (laughs) I don't know because I've told I was broke since I got out of high school. I mean, I never was told anything different. Told I was, uh, I didn't have skills or experience. I couldn't get myself out of the holes that were digging. So let's let's try something different. Let's uh, reprogram our mind to say, maybe we're not broke in our mind. (laughs) And the way to do that is to imagine what it's like to actually have money and spend money and expect more money. And your subconscious doesn't know the difference between what you imagine, what you remember, what you dream, and the real world. They've shown that on brain scans. What the people can imagine or recall and experience, and it lights up the same parts of their brain. So we're going to light up our brain with imagining that we've got $1,000 today. And that's the first, the first amount we're going to spend. I'd love it if anyone watching would do this at home and practice this for the next three or four weeks and see what happens. Because I've heard really amazing synchronistic results and I can talk more about those at a later point but you start with this phi number of one and then the next day one again so a thousand on day two day three is two thousand day four three thousand day five five thousand and it goes up from there eight thousand thirteen thousand and so on and by day 21 we're spending hundred and forty four thousand dollars on paper but By that point, we will have had a daily practice of imagining and expecting money and spending it and giving it and saving it and not being in debt, but having a surplus. And this is what we're retraining our entire consciousness and psyche to be wired like. I I think this is a brilliant idea. And I mean, how many of us actually spend time visualizing and imagining beyond just like, man, I wish I had that. And then that's the end of it. You know what I'm saying, man? What do you think? Well, you touched on a lot of really good points. One of the things that really um, got me excited was when you were talking about how the brain, the unconscious mind, the conscious mind don't discern the difference between, um, you know, what's tangible and what's not. And I think that's so powerful to really understand because when you operate from the tangible space, you're operating from the 3D. Well, we're higher conscious beings, so we're used to operating from higher vibrations and higher frequencies of reality to where the, the, the physical manifestation always came last. You didn't, you, the physical manifestation was the manifestation of the how, but the how could not have been created without the what first. So you had to imagine it first. And a great example of that is like, you know how we're at a restaurant and we're starving and we're waiting for our food. And then as soon as we see that waiter walk up to us with that food, our mind starts picturing us eating that food before it even gets to our plate. And so our mouth begins to salivate um as if it is already in the process of breaking that food down and so if we could take that same sense of of intention with our reality when it comes to the way that we think about money then we could consciously allow our intentions to to salivate as if they have already received the money that it was craving and that it was hungry for before it actually comes here which is really the process of receiving the process of the money on its way, the same as food on its, on its way to your table. Um, so that alone should really, really get you excited because we, and, and it's, it's interesting because what you touched on is, is a, a principle that I'm working on uh, uprooting the last bit of the programming even in my own life. And that programming is that um, activity equals productivity. We are conditioned to believe that activity equals productivity. And so, you know, we've been told our entire life, if you want to get, if you want something in life, you got to hustle, you got to work, you know, relentless, you got to work nonstop, you got to work until you're tired, and then you got to work a little past that. And it's like, I don't believe that's true. I I believe that us as higher conscious beings, us as co-creators, us as magicians, us as alchemists, 
I believe that we work in magic. We work in, in conscious energy. And so instead of exerting our physical energy, trying to physically manifest something, we were designed to use our conscious energy to set our intention and allow our intentions to put us in alignment with the things that we are seeking so that all we really have to do is be aware. All we really have to do is be aware that everything that we already need, we already have. And when you can shift your awareness into that abundance mentality, you begin to use your conscious energy to salivate the idea of abundance and the notion of abundance to the point where your mouth starts to water over the idea of abundance. And then you begin to see the abundance all around you because your mind has already tuned yourself to the frequency of becoming aware of the abundance that's coming slash here. Um, so I am so excited uh, just to, to be able to communicate that because that is a game changer for a lot of people. Um, and then we take the next step in that manifestation process by being able to finally tune our imagination. Learning how to finally tune our imagination. So we can get to the point where we can imagine, you know, what it's like for the money to be in our life. But can we imagine the actual money in our hand? The actual, how we fold the money into our wallet? How we can, how we log on to our mobile app on our banking app and actually visualize the money there, regardless of what money is actually physically there? Reenact the feeling as if the money was already in your account. Envision yourself actually walking to the store to purchase the things that you want with the money that you need that's already on its way, that you already have. Yeah, in this experiment, I actually would uh, look up items that I needed online and say, okay, this is how much it costs. And this is what mm -hmm. it feels like to be on the website and about to hit the buy button. <laughs> so your entire body is crystal. I mean, especially the water in your body. But what resonance is it holding? You're, you know, we know that water holds a vibration and frequency of intentions and words. And, I, and <laughs> so... What it's holding is, like I said before, uh, I'm broke. Uh, I don't have enough money for this or that. And, well, that seems like a really hard mindset to change just with a sheer force of will saying, all right, I've changed my mind. And like you said, it doesn't, like what we don't need is a shift of awareness. So it doesn't require actual productive activity, quote unquote. But the law of a attraction does work in correspondence with the law of action. And like I was saying before, the unconscious doesn't know the difference between an imaginary act and a real act. So although it doesn't really take much effort to sit down for five minutes and imagine and picture what you're going to buy and write it out, it does count as an action. You're taking action to do something different. And that action and that idea and that five minutes a day have a cumulative effect every day where eventually you're retuning the entire resonator, which is your body towards the abundance that you're talking about. On the video stream, I chose this, uh, these trees as the background, this green, because we are talking about getting more green. But why is money even colored green? It's because they know that this entire dimension is fueled by the heart chakra. That's the entire point of the ring we're on. And it's learning that balanced center point heart system. And that's where the abundance lies. It's in your heart. It's in, you know it to be true intuitively that what you have is already there and provided for you. What you need is already available. And what, <laughs> what tunes you into it is love as opposed to fear. Love shows you the potential that's infinite all around you. Whatever you love, you see that it could be anything and do anything and you want to let it grow in whatever way it wants to grow. And when you're afraid that something of something or someone, you only see them in one way. And that's the way of which that you're afraid that they are. So it's a difference between expanding to infinite possibilities through loving perspective or condensing down to one uh, non-choice or seeming non-choice through, through the fear of vibration. Yeah. Mm, I love what okay. you said, man. This is, we could probably do like two hours about this, but, uh, yeah, we could do <laughs> let's, uh, well, let's talk about a few of the things that we bought and then wrap up the first stream so that we can save some room for, save some stuff for our future upcoming ones. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll let you go first. So for me, um, this was very interesting for me because in this process, um, I saw some deprogramming that I needed to do in my own life. 
And that deprogramming came in the category of my, my worthiness to what the intentions I was setting. And, and I think it's just big because a lot of times we will set intentions for things, but we'll, we'll setting, we're setting the intention without believing in our intention. And I didn't even realize that I was doing this because on my birth today, the great example, um, I almost felt weird. So, so spirit told me that I needed to put a fundraiser out for this trip that I'm trying to take to Peru um, and have my first ayahuasca ceremony. Mother, Mother Aya has been calling out to me now uh, for about uh, two months. And so I believe it's my time to take that step on my journey. And so I was very hesitant about um, you know, putting a fundraiser out because for some reason there was a part of me that felt like I wasn't worthy enough to ask people for a donation. Um, I, I had this programming in my mind that, that always just made it seem like, you know, I, I don't want to be a burden to anyone, even if that means, you know, someone giving me money that they may not have. And so I, I, I kept consciously um, belittling the resources that the universe was trying to, is trying to line up for me. And so I, I had to get out of the universe's way. I, and that, that was a big deprogramming step for me. Uh, today is just getting out of the universe's way in the sense that, you know, it's not my job to dictate how the universe brings me my resources. You know, I'm, I am, a, we are a part of this collective body. And so if, if I'm a cell, that in goes this back body, to trying to control the heart with the mind, because yes, the heart is the yes. abundance generator that we're talking about. And your, <laughs> your mind is the one trying to control where and when, what comes and that it has to be this way. Right. Yeah, man, I see you. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think on the same algorithm that the universe uses to bring things and create resources, but my brain wasn't meant to be able to calculate that. And so I, I will always become stagnant when I try to rationalize the how, instead I'm just supposed to worry about the what. And so that really helped me anchor in the, the, the notion that whatever the universe has for me, I deserve it. You know, I truly deserve it. It's already, it's already mine because I am the universe. Yeah. So that was huge for me. That was so huge for me because when I realized that I was starving myself because I was trying to think like my higher self, instead of letting my higher self do what it does and just bring the resources to me. And all I have to do is show up and be grateful for those things. And that, that secure my, my, my manifestation, um, I really needed to hear that. I really need to know that. And so uh, kind of as we're taking that transition into like talking about the things that we, that we bought, um, I, I had to become, I had to step into a very, very selfish uh, mentality because I realized that I've been missing that. And that's the reason why uh, my manifestations um, weren't coming as, as efficiently as they could because I was choosing to not be selfish. Because again, one of the other programs that I have to uproot is that selfishness is a bad thing. And so when I always thought that selfishness meant evil or selfish meant negativity or selfish meant that you weren't caring about other people, every time I had the ability to manifest resources into my own life, the first thing I always did was figure out why I thought someone else would need it more than I did. Yeah, dude, altruism is kind of a trap that's programmed into us by the slave religions. It's not that you shouldn't be altruistic or generous. It's that whenever you diminish your own resources to the because of society expectations or because of, of whatever, to the point where now you don't have enough to fill your own self, then you have totally screwed everyone else that actually does depend on you because you're bringing a raggedy ass, half energized, non prime version of self, yeah. you know? like, <laughs> so the stronger you are the more you are there for others on a consistent basis and the way i like to put it is uh, you don't even have to worry about what's coming up in life or what things you have that are t to pay for or uh, a tragedy or a disaster that may or may not happen if you trust yourself and you know that you are taking the old, utmost care of yourself which is how you know that you trust yourself if you're taking care of yourself to the utmost that equates to you can trust yourself because if that makes sense like you're like a parent that's taking a good care of their kid a trustworthy parent in a way and then that means wow. that whatever happens wherever you are whatever comes up there's nothing to worry about because that trustworthy parent is there ready to uh, mm -hmm. ready to do what's right in the moment no matter what it takes and so why even fear about it or worry about it or try to plan it out if you know that the old 
the ultimate version of yourself, who's the most trustworthy that it could possibly be and always does what's right without compromise, is going to be always there in every situation. What is there to worry about? It's like having Superman on call or, or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. That's so good. I love that. Because especially when, I, when you realize that um, you, you are who you project. And so when we starve ourselves to try to help others, we're actually working backwards because once we starve ourselves by thinking that other people need the resources that were designed to be in our life, we project that and we reflect mm. that. So we're showing other people how to not take care of themselves and provide for themselves and to always provide for the next person. So like, it's like a game of telephone, but you started off kind of already delivering the wrong message. So there's absolutely no way that that message could come back correctly because of what you first sent out in your own life. So again, this was, man, I was so this happy to get this on my birthday. I, I, the, my birthday is the perfect day for me to put this into action by receiving. I mean, I, I was gonna make a status last night that said, you know, I don't want anyone telling me happy birthday. I, I would like for you to, you know, go spend, it, spend the time you will be telling me happy birthday, going telling someone else how much they mean to you. Um, a random person, I said, that would make my birthday the most. Um, but I shifted that because I haven't celebrated my birthday in years just because I've always, I never cared about it. I never cared about people choosing this day to admire me. I always wanted it to be on, about someone else. And I didn't realize how that was hindering my own abundance in my own life by saying, I'm not worthy enough. I'm not allowing the universe to give me my abundance. I'm not allowing the universe to show me how much it loves me. Um, and, and so I just have to really speak that from my heart because I feel like there are a lot of people who are living that way and don't know it. You know, we want to take care of other people. You know, and this, I'm really going to open up about this because I, this is how uh, I felt even with my child. Um, you know, when I started my walk, I had to leave my child and my, my significant other uh, at the time. And that was very, very hard for me. And, you know, what spirit had to really anchor in for me was the notion that you can't take care of anyone until you take care of yourself. And so spirit was telling me, he said, you know, it's, it's, a, it's more beneficial for you to be temporarily away from your child while tending to yourself so that when you get back into the presence of your child, you can reflect someone who tends to themselves, which then shows your child how to tend to his self or herself. And so it's like, I, when I realized, I was like, wow, you know, it, it's almost like I'm doing my child more of an injustice when I'm there, but putting everyone first before me because I'm showing her at that point how to put everyone else before her. And yeah, I man, I learned that programming from my own mom to a, an extent, and uh, yeah, I'm still dealing with it. So it sounds like, if from the wrong perspective, it could sound like this is the most horrible thing you've ever heard, but this has nothing mm -hmm. to do with abandoning your responsibility to other people it, or, or neglecting to love those people. It just has to do with living the example for ourselves and <laughs> create, creating that point of reference for your own life because you, you can't you can't show somebody um how to be something if you don't if you can't be it yourself because you've got no point of reference like you know how many people say that they love someone but they do nothing but hurt them or they say i'm doing this because i love you but you're putting this person through so much toxic nature and so much negativity but you're saying you're doing it out of love well when you don't create when you don't create a point of reference of self-love then you create a distorted reality of what love is and then you project that. And so I believe the same thing happens when it comes to tending to ourselves. It's like, if we don't tend to ourselves, how will we have a point of reference of knowing when we actually are tending to someone else? We'll, we'll, we'll think that we're tending to someone else, but because we haven't tended to ourselves, we'll never actually know if we're doing it correctly. So sometimes it takes time for you to separate, take care of yourself, clean yourself up, and then come back so now that you can reflect a clean version of yourself to the people that you love the most because that's what the true love really is it's reflecting the best version of yourself man um, that's a well said well said <laughs> that's what yeah. freedom is uh self-mastery but it's not like mm. self-control it's literally becoming the master of yourself like the way that a loving master would take care of their pet or something i mean your body is is you it's the temple for the divine spirit but uh you know you got to make sure that it's as clean and functional as possible for that spirit to come in and live there. But hey, we're we're getting a little long in the tooth on this one, man. Let's uh yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> let's move us down towards the end. That that way you can go do fun birthday stuff because it's totally worth celebrating you 
man, there's nothing, it doesn't take away from anyone else for you to be great. Actually, the greater you realize that you are, the more that everyone else around you is able to realize their greatness. I mean, to put it in a nutshell, what you just said. So celebrate your amazing infinite potential and what you've already anchored in to this life and to this reality so far. It's the, the beginning is near, my friend. <laughs> Yes. Sovereignty. Now, I, I've actually, I, I've had so many downloads coming in today. I would, I would actually like to hear what you purchased um, and, and what, what you're in the process of bringing into manifestation, because um, I feel like uh, that part of this podcast is, is spirits kind of telling me like this, like you're about to hit the grand slam on this by really walking people through your process on how, you know, you purchase things consciously first and knowing that when you purchase them, you know, you kind of submitted an Amazon order and it's already on its way. You're just waiting to claim it. I would love to hear what purchase. <laughs> okay, dude, I'll drop a few of the things. I've done two days of the process already. So there's really no reason why it can't be staggered. If you guys listening haven't started yet, make day one today or start tomorrow, whatever. But I've done, I've done two days. Later tonight, I'll do the third purchase. So I've spent $2,000 on paper. I won't necessarily go through all of it. And I'll just say that this is supposed to be fun and not stressful, so when you're doing it, don't try to worry about making the very most conscious and, a, and amazing purchase ever in the right order. Because part of, part of this is training yourself to realize there's more coming tomorrow. So if you didn't get the thing that would have been ideal for today, you somehow slipped your mind, well, you got more okay. coming tomorrow. Not literally, not just more as in an additional amount, but like more than what was there yesterday. And then the next day, more than what was there yesterday. So there's really no wrong answers here. It's an art project. There's nothing wrong that you can choose. It, whatever, if you want to give your first $5,000 all to charity, who cares? It's imaginary money. If you don't want to give a single cent away to another person and tell you've got a house in the Hamptons, whatever, man, it's okay. <laughs> this isn't real in, the, in that sense. It's imaginary. And it's going to teach you you're going to learn from it I, I would say for sure because you're going to find like wow i can't even think of things to spend that much money on and there's how you know that you're in the brain trap of uh expecting to be mm -hmm. broke and you can't even imagine how you spend a million dollars then there's a problem so i'll start with a few of these things they're pretty random first i dropped 350 dollars on a bunch of hat pins that i'm going to take to an upcoming music festival this is something i'm actually going to purchase really soon I have to design the pins first, but I love selling pins at festivals and that's a great way to turn money into more money and easy. It's sort of like an art currency, <laughs> little pieces of metal that are, are cool and unique. Then I spent some money on getting my oil changed and getting my tires looked at. And then I bought a bunch of nootropics for 80, roughly $80. You can get nootropic supplements that really help your brain and memory and focus. And I love taking them, but I haven't, I've told myself they're too expensive. Even though I know that the points in my life where I was buying those things and on them, I was some of the most uh, like flow state points of my life. So they're the, one of the first things I'm going to buy. And 20 bucks on gas. You got to have gas, although I'm going to start buying more uh, ethanol-based gas because I just learned a lot about that and all the lies that they tell us about it being bad for your car. So that's a whole nother thing. <laughs> but but <laughs> nah, maybe we can bring that up as a topic later. Yeah. I spent 140 bucks on a booth at an upcoming metaphysical fair here in my town that I'm going to vend at, so I needed to cover the vending fees for that. And then I bought $100 worth of beads to make jewelry for that booth event. And then I spent 100 bucks on stuff to build on add-ons to my garden and get some raised beds that my dog can't get in easily. And then the last $160 I spent on stickers for my podcast and online advertisement for the podcast. Then on day two, I'll just go through this really quick. I produced some custom bandanas to sell at my shop for $300. I got some magnesium lotion from secretenergy.com, the best place to get any of your supplements. And that will really help with the recovery and, and the recovery of your body's muscles and energy centers after exertion is a big part of keeping the abundance generator flowing. So that's an important one. Um, spent some money on groceries, donated some money to a local tiny home community for homeless people. I bought myself a big piece of Damborite crystal and I uh, bought an ounce of fine cannabis to share with friends and family. Donated some cash to a friend who's starting an elderberry farm and I spent some money to get some work done on my partner's SUV. Although pretty soon on the day where I've got more money, I'm getting her an entirely different car because that one is a guzzler. And that's, wow. that's my first two wow. days. 
Nice, nice. So when you're, uh, so, okay, so the first thing that, that we're doing for, for people who are kind of just kind of jumping into this manifestation uh, flow uh, of creation. So, you know, you, you write down the, the things that you want to purchase, you know, but then you, you take it a step further because what you actually want to do is you want to envision yourself. And the more detailed that you are, you know, I, I imagine, um, so imagine our energy is, uh, is, is being charged with intention and attention. And so the more we are attentive to even our imagination, the more energy that we give that charges that imagination and brings it closer into our material realm. So not only do you write down, you know, uh, you know, what the thing is that you're trying to purchase, you know, you also and close your eyes and you envision yourself, you know, what store are you having to pick this up at? You know, imagine yourself driving into the parking lot of that store, taking your key out of the ignition. What clothes are you wearing? You know, look at, look down at yourself in your imagination and see what clothes that you decide you want to put on that day to go pick up that manifestation. Envision yourself walking into the store. Envision yourself opening the door for the person walking in front of you. You know, envision yourself walking to that aisle. Envision yourself seeing products all around the product that you're actually going to purchase. Envision yourself picking it up, looking at it, and saying, man, I can't believe I have this. Envision yourself walking through the cash register. Envision yourself having a friendly conversation, you know, with the cashier. Envision yourself taking the money out of your pocket and saying, here you go, this is the money that I have. Envision yourself getting the receipt back. Envision yourself walking back into the car. Envision yourself driving back home. Like, <laughs> get as specific as possible. Because Imagine that's yourself what showing your friends, like, dude, do you see this thing? Yeah. exactly make it fun exactly. dude i'm gonna write down all those steps and i'm gonna try to apply that to every st everything that i purchase on the whole list and that might be more excessive than i'm able to achieve but what you've just described is brilliant because we're literally turning this into not just an abundance generating plan but uh this is like a meditative third eye expanding exercise and i just want to mm. say when we first met, I was really stuck on my uh, solar plexus chakra for a while. <laughs> I was blocking up there pretty bad. And I showed you this wand that I'd had and for, that was missing the uh, the solar plexus yeah, you did. Wow. crystal I on it, it. Right? Uh, it lights up. <laughs> <laughs> but it lights up. I finally repaired that around right before this 30th solar return. and. Immediately, I became aware that the next one that needed work, my heart chakra is good. I like, I know, I mean, I know that I'm feeling open and flowing with that all the time. My throat chakra, good, because some of the issues that were blocking up my solar plexus were connected to my throat chakra as well. Dealt with that. Uh, next was the third eye chakra. Well, haven't been doing much to squeegee that one. So some more cleansing, physical cleansing, fasting, and, but most importantly, what we just talked about visualization exercises in depth where you're really really looking at that inner world looking with your inner sight inner eye and that's why i got so excited and was like literally like cracking up when you're naming every step of the process because i was like this is brilliant you're giving us a formula to actually do this like easily easily just like at the very beginning you said it's not supposed to be really hard <laughs> it's easy it's not, it's not. We, we don't realize how this this 3d matrix has completely destroyed our imagination and that is the one thing that we need to create whatever it is we want to and let me say this as well because the most important thing that you have to imagine uh, if you don't hear anything else on this podcast the most important thing that you have to imagine is you have to imagine the feeling of having it you have to imagine because the feeling is what confirms the energy is secure within you the feeling of the energy that that's the feeling of currency so you have that electric current in your currency so when you're talking about manifesting currency in your life you have to feel the energy that comes with the currency so when you're trying to envision something that is coming and manifesting in your life you have to get excited as if you already have it the same way you would yeah. be excited when you're like yo what am i going to find money like oh my god i can get everything that i want today you get excited about that right now. Yeah, dude, the enthusiasm is the uh, b the catalyst, right? So, I mean, yeah. on the subject of money, it's just a symbol of abundance, like we talked about earlier. It's a symbol in this 3D dimension. It doesn't have to be good or evil. It's a tool that we use to actually yeah. interface with the, the shared dream space that we're in. Yeah. But if I told you right now that 
in the morning, you're going to get $10 trillion given to you. But you got to go to sleep tonight by 9 p.m. And if you're not asleep, completely asleep from 9 to 6 a.m. And we see you tossing and turning or waking up, you got to uh, <laughs> you you give it up. You don't get any of it. So how excited you wouldn't be able to do it, right? It's, you're too excited. You'd be so, so damn excited. And it's just an idea. So treat this imaginary exercise and this idea like it's real and try to get excited about it i'm feeling excited that's the whole reason i wanted to do these broadcasts with you about it and not just do this alone by myself which would be effective because i've heard great stories about this but this is what's exciting actually bouncing back and forth with all the different uh facets of of what this actually entails and what it means for us and this is it man i feel like this is this could be a a turning point for me and you and anyone that joins us on this journey and what's cool is we'll be doing it for a few weeks so there's gonna be a long time for people to catch wind of this little matrix hack (laughs) yes yes i like that matrix let me stop and just say this as well i love that little sash you have on right now that that right there yeah yeah so if you if you i'm gonna actually uh put that in my manifestation uh wish list yeah that that that's that's sexy right there yeah, it's a lady's kimono. <laughs> wow. Hey, I, it was my well, little now. sister's, but she didn't want it anymore. So uh, I, I took it from my parents' house, and it's like my festy <laughs> robe. Hey, that's nice, bro. I like it. I like it. That's the you see the, the shirt uh, though. The, the mention, yeah, one great work. I like that. I like that. What does that mean? Truth, freedom, love. One great work. It's the great work of the freemasons or the alchemists i mean the, the good yeah. freemasons i should say right 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 that's the what we're doing we're doing it that's what the great work is <laughs> yeah, <what> Tra- <laughs> transforming con- transforming consciousness from within instead of from without the real revolution is in the mind not in the streets and that's what mm-hmm. the great work is this is yeah what, yeah as above so below as within so without sovereignty mm-hmm. 2020 is the goal without a doubt and yeah. we're gonna get there this is it man yeah. generating sovereignty yeah. requires generating current and currency and one more thing to say about that is your health is your wealth i mean it mm-hmm. rhymes for a reason for sure it rhymes for a reason and the earth is our shared heart and the earth is where the abundance comes from so the abundance comes from your heart it comes from your I mean, it's faith, I guess, but don't look at it as believing because belief is an antonym. It's the opposite of truth. Look at it as a known fact that you've got the abundance generator inside you. You are the battery <laughs> and you just got to you just got to plug it into the right frequencies. And that's what this imaginary exercise is all about. Tuning the body crystal to the frequency of the uh, giving and receiving in infinite measure and don't worry about like the universe, the universe, like you are not going to give yourself more than you can handle. You're not going to like overcharge and blow up the battery capacitor. You'll get a Mm -hmm. gradual increase of opportunities and synchronicities in rhythm with the work that you're doing on yourself to open up and clear the channels that bring that to you. So it will, it will happen more readily and easily though, if you are programming yourself with this positive uh positive ritual i guess but hey let's let's wrap it up man what do you think so let's do this um i want to walk people through this alchemical process of manifestation one more time yes so people can kind of really anchor it in so because there's one part i kind of didn't really get a chance to talk about and it's it's super simple but starting from the beginning so you know we write down uh, our intentions of the physical tangible things that we want to manifest um, we number them, you know, starting off from the thing that we want most um, and to the, all the way down to, you know, the thing that we want least, but it's still a want. Then step two is we imagine ourselves. We play with our imagination where we envision ourselves um, as specifically as we can in this reality where we are in the process of acquiring the things that we would like to manifest and the things that we would like to possess. And so we imagine ourselves using as much detail as we can. Now imagine our, our day, the day that you're going to pick up that new item. Imagine you waking up in the morning and wiping the crust out of your eyes all the way to the finished result of you getting back in your car with the, with the item sitting in the bag or, you know, you, you order it online. So imagine you, you're opening the door and picking it up and saying it's finally here. So you imagine that. Step three um, is imagine the feeling. Imagine the feeling of satisfaction that you have, knowing that you set your intention towards something and knowing that the universe magnetically attracted it to you. 
imagine that feeling, imagine that feeling of bliss knowing that this actually works because it does. So imagine that feeling and then start feeling that feeling right now and realize that you don't ever have to leave that feeling. That's the illusion. The illusion is that you have to come in and out of it. But the reality of it is 5D living, you never have to leave, baby. You're here all the time. So anchor that feeling in and then do everything you can to keep that feeling content within your being all day, every day. The last part and anchoring in your manifestation is being grateful. So being, being grateful is the process of becoming aware of what's already been there. When you become grateful for something, you begin to see something from a different spectrum. You see it from a different point of view. Now, for example, my phone has been sitting here this entire conversation. I haven't looked at it not one time. Did it exist to me during this conversation? No, it didn't because I didn't acknowledge it. I didn't, I didn't see it. But now that I stop and look at my phone, and I say, I am so grateful that I have this phone right now. I'm tuning my five senses into this present moment, acknowledging my phone. And so that's me, that's confirming. So that, that's bringing something that was normally not in my frame of reference. And by being grateful for it, I chose to pay attention to it, which made it real again in this present moment. And so now that I am taking my intention and charging it towards me being grateful, I'm communicating to the universe what I want to see more of. Because remember, everything is already here. So gratuity helps you see what's already here. And that is how you bring in and secure that manifestation. So you set your intention, you envision your intention, you feel the feeling of your intention, and then you become grateful as if you've already received it. And that's the full creation process. Now all you have to do is allow time to catch up to what you've already created. Yeah, man, I'm going to take notes of, of your process there, the four quadrants of it, and literally going to note down all that that walkthrough that you gave earlier of each step in the imagination process. And I think instead of buying a whole bunch of things that add up to the amount, I'll probably shift to buying one or two things in this experiment at a time. That way I can go through a really, really detailed process of imagining the whole thing with each thing, yeah. you know? So yeah. I think that's good. I'm learning. This is why I wanted to do this to, together because uh, we're going to really enhance each other's and the audience is going to enhance our perspective on the best way to do this. And we're going to hear some cool synchronicities and stories by the, yeah. by the time six months are through. We're going to be in a really different place, not just financially, but... The world is because it's uh, as within I as without. I, I would love to have it set up to where um, this just came to me because I think people really need to see this. I would love it if um, you can write down uh, all the, the short term things that you would like to acquire. And then I want to write down the big the big goals, you know, the, the world changing cosmic goals that would normally take years to manifest and I want to walk people through my thought process on how I envision those things that may be even further out and then how I reflect those long-term vision goals in my everyday life so yeah man um, make, make know. note of anything that you want to talk about coming up because I think in future streams we're going to show we're going to show the Fibonacci spiral in nature we're going to talk about that more we're going to talk about what you just said and anything else that comes up as we're exploring this set of ideas, this is going to be like a really cool series. It's, <laughs> I mean, we're yeah, doing something excited. totally different here. And, and this is uh, for me anyway, the way that we're structuring this and I'm super excited about it. This is reflection of the, the shift itself is this entire format of how we're conjuring this because I mean, the magic is clearly there. We've been bouncing off each other as if that we had prepared notes to, to talk about this with. And no, <laughs> this is just, flow you know, state. this is a flow state. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but flow states don't hurt to have a few notes. You know, you don't have to go crazy with it. But if you want to keep something in mind and we'll, we'll get there, we, we'll be doing Perfect more streams. And happy solar return to you, man. Uh, I, we Thank will you. wrap this up for now and find a good, we'll talk later and find a good time to do round two. And if we can do them every day, we will, even if they're short, if we skip a few days or well, but we'll do our best and it's going to be cool. Absolutely. I love you. Thank you for having me here. Thank you for everyone who has tuned in to receive these jewels of knowledge. Um, what we're going to realize um, is that, you know, we're actually preparing to have this, um, this, this, this galactic spell work where all of our intentions are going to be aimed towards one thing very, very soon. And that one thing is going to be a healed 
planet, a healed world. And so as we're breaking down these day-to-day intentions, what we're actually doing is we're preparing for this, this, this cosmic scale uh, spell that is going to completely shift everyone into this higher vibration consciousness where everything is just going to be perfect and everything is going to be blissful and everything is going to be unity. Solutions are going to be coming abundantly. That's where we're going to right now. So we're just, we're in the beginning stages. We're in the first inning right now, but I just want you to, to know where we're going because that's coming very, very soon. So, so tune, go ahead and start preparing yourself to tune into that. Yeah. And listen, guys, if that sounds too good to be true, first of all, why do you have to believe that, that things have to be, you know, ugly or corrupt? And second of all, every problem that exists right now came into being with the solution already in existence too. So what we're talking about is shifting into a gear where we already know that the solutions are there and we never even have problems because literally the problem is the solution and we go, oh, this is a learning experience. Okay, take it, go, grow, expand, Con- continuity, no disruption. That's what we're going, that's possible. I mean. It exists in nature. There's huge stretches of region where the energy and life is growing without much dis- disconnect to the continuity at all. And we are nature. We are life. Look at the strongest tree in your neighborhood. And that's the one that you could be, that we could all be. But yeah, we better wrap it up. I could keep, keep going on, man. <laughs> we got a lot yeah. to say, apparently. Yeah. Thank you. I <laughs> love you too, dude. This has been a blast. It's one of my favorite things I've ever done. So... <laughs> Looking yes, forward absolutely. To, right, looking forward to delivering you. powerful messages and many future yes. episodes of this Fire Up Your Abundance live stream series. Thank you. Yes. Wholeness and Balance Vibrations. Yes. All right. Bye, everybody.